So hello and welcome to today's webinar, Jira Best Practices. I'm really excited that so many of you joined and that we can do this webinar together with our guest from Chopero, Bartosz. Thank you very much for joining. Pleasure um, is mine. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation. Sure. Um, so before we start with um, today's topic, we would like to introduce ourselves, talk a bit about uh, why backups? Why are we doing that? Um, and then I hand over to Bartosz um, for the live demo uh, of uh, Git Protect, and then we will have a Q&A um, part. Um, some housekeeping rules up front. Uh, the webinar will be recorded. The recording will be made available afterwards. And you will get an email with all the details. Your microphones and cameras uh, are switched off, so we're not recording you. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. We will answer them, maybe also in between. Um, and yeah, when we do surveys, uh, they will take place anonymously, and only the first names are displayed for your questions. Um, introduction. So uh, my name is Jan Szapanski. I'm one of the co-founders of Yodokurs. I'm responsible for the marketing department. I'm still working as a consultant. Um, over the last 15 years, um, Atlassian was always the tool I worked with. Um, so during my different roles in different companies, I, I used Jira um, to organize my work. Um, and now I'm one of the co-founders of Yodokurs. Uh, and now I'm able to actually speak about it um, from a marketing perspective. Uh, so yeah, really excited about that. Saskia. Yep. Would you like to sure. introduce yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Zaspia. Um, I'm a business psychologist and I support Jan in marketing. And before I started working at your because almost two years ago, um, I was a head of marketing for a sanitary online shop. And after that, I uh, was responsible for the customer journey of an e-bike sharing system. And uh, yeah, I also couldn't let go of the university and um, Besides that, I'm still working as a mentor for psychology and um, communication management. Yeah, and today I will take care of the questions. Yeah. Cool. So some words um, about Yodokus. We were founded in 2019 uh, in, in Riesenbeck, really big city near the Netherlands border. We are consider ourselves as a cloud first partner. So four years ago, uh, we said uh, we want to do, or we want to become an Atlassian solution partner, and we want to focus on the cloud. Not because the cloud was like super great, but we really thought that this will be the future and that, that it will become great. And uh, it is. Uh, and uh, maybe some of you have seen uh, the Team 23 um, and the big announcements uh, Atlassian made. Um, so really, really great to see how the how the platform develops and what great features are coming there. We're a platinum solution partner and also cloud and ITSM specialized. Um, almost over 50 people. I, I don't have the exact numbers because so many people are joining. And we have over 30 plus partners, which is really, really important to us uh, to have a partner network um, with partners like Supero um, and other marketplace vendors. Um, we work really closely together um, to provide the best um, yeah, customer experience and customer support and consulting. So, um, yeah, again, I'm really thankful for Bartosz uh, joining today. Bartosz, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course, absolutely. Um, hello, guys. Uh, Jan, Saskia, thank you very much for, uh, for this invitation. And I'm really excited to, to take part in today's uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Bartosz. Uh, I'm located uh, in Poland. Uh, I'm related to, to Zopro Software. Uh, almost for uh, since its very beginning, uh, I work at gitprotect.io, aka Zopro Software. Uh, since uh, 2015, so it's like eight years now. 
And uh, I graduated uh, in uh, Europa Universitat Fiatrina in Frankfurt Oder. So I do know some, uh, I do have some, some, some German skills, but I definitely prefer to, to speak English. Uh, and uh, basically, I'm responsible here at gitprotect.io, aka Zopro Software. I'm uh, responsible for uh, everything that is related to Git Protect uh, and uh, I will have this great opportunity to present you guys uh, Git Protect in action, I believe. So, uh, once again, thank you for invitation. Uh, enjoy. Yeah, maybe some words about uh, Xapero and Git Protect. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, we are well. We are the backup solution producer. And uh, we have been like the company itself has been founded in 2009. Uh, it's almost 15, so we have almost 15 years of uh, experience uh, in backup technologies in plural, uh, because Git Protect is not the only product that we provide. We provide also some different backup tools uh, for more, let's say, traditional uh, backup purposes like endpoint protection, uh, databases protection, uh, Microsoft 365 protection. Nevertheless, Git Protect is our flagship product. This is our diamond in our crown. And uh, today we are going definitely to, uh, to discuss it. We are operating uh, worldwide. Uh, we have, uh, we are present, like our products are available uh, on basically each continent. Uh, and uh, the wallet of our uh, satisfied customers is growing uh, constantly. Uh, Git Protect itself as a product, as a platform, as a backup tool has been released in 2009. And since that time, we, we have had uh, a chance to, to deploy it uh, to like multiple small, medium, and, uh, and quite big uh, users. As far as I know, they are quite uh, happy with it, and we are going to to continue um, our 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 uh, our journey. Uh, this year, we 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 have made a huge milestone. We like Zopro Software, the company itself, uh, become compliant with ISO 27001, as well as with uh, SOC 2. Uh, so to make long story short, we do know how to take care about data. We know the drill. We are uh, quite a bit specialist in this uh, in this area, uh, and such such experience has been uh, noticed by Gartner. Gartner, as as you guys can see on the slide on the slides right now, Gartner recommends Git Protect uh, as a backup tool uh, for intellectual property uh, protection. So. That's it from my side. Awesome. Thank you very much. So um, before we start, I'd like to mention that all videos um, of the webinar series about uh, security and compliance will be on YouTube as well. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, click the bell so that you get information when new videos will come up. So yeah, let's dive in. Why backups, you might think. Um, why, why are we... Uh, are we are talking about backups. Uh, is my data not backed up automatically uh, when using a SaaS platform? Well, it depends. Um, so we need to talk about the shared responsibility model in SaaS platforms overall. It's not a Atlassian specific. Um, it's within all SaaS platforms. So the, the question always becomes who is responsible for the data in the SaaS applications? What is the shared responsibility model? And um, what are the, beside the data protection strategies that Lassian offers, what should I do, right? In our last webinar um, uh, about JIRA data management, we talked about that quite a lot. So I'll, I would just give you a glimpse uh, about what the shared responsibility model is and why we should um, think about, uh, is our data protected? So who is responsible? Right. Um, when we take a look at the Atlassian community, for example, um, and also in other communities with Salesforce, HubSpot and stuff like that, there are always questions, um, how can I recover X, Z, Y? Uh, in that case, how can I recover issues that are deleted? And when we take a look um, at how the uh, distribution is of um, where data is deleted or where we lose data, 
The ESG research report, um, the evolution of data protection cloud strategies shows that more than 50% of the data is due to deletion. Um, service outages and data corruption, ex uh, accidental deletions, um, malicious deletions, account closures, um, something like, I don't know, a user is leaving the company and the data is gone. Um, so what is the impact to you? Ask yourself, what type of data do you have in your Atlassian cloud and uh, within the apps? Probably all your software development teams are working with that. All your product plans, um, customer requests, change management information, your business teams, HR, legal and finance work with that. So what would be the impact if you lose any of your data? What would happen when Jira stops for a day? Well, most of the time you would do something like this, right? So risk of losing data um, comes with maybe loss in revenue and reputation, definitely productivity loss. And when you are in the regulated environment, I worked four and a half years for pay one payment service provider, you probably are unable to meet audits and compliance regulations and requirements. So what's the Atlassian model? Alessian writes in its documentation that we do not use the backups they do to revert customer initiated disruption changes, such as fields overwritten using by scripts or deleting of issues, projects or sites. To avoid data loss, Atlassian recommends you to make regular backups. So when we take a look at the uh, shared responsibility model, there's obviously the Atlassian responsibility of taking care of the hosting, the application, the system, that everything is secure, that privacy is up and running, compliance, and so on and so forth. So that the SaaS service um, is running and everything will be back up in that regards. So let's say there's, there's an outage uh, that Atlassian is able to uh, do disaster recovery, right? That's in place but we also do have a shared responsibility when it comes to what kind of apps you install, how you inform your users of how to use the application. We had a webinar about PII protection with Polymetis apps, right? Um, what kind of data are you allowed to add to the system? What kind of information are you allowed to write into your Jira ticket? Probably, not credit card numbers or passwords, right? So you're covered with PIR protection, let's say. That's an app you can install. Um, and also with that, um, policy and compliance related stuff. So the last thing I would um, point out is what kind of types of disasters and ownerships we have here. So on the left-hand side, we do have um, the disaster times like the data center disaster, right? Something is probably going wrong with AWS or Google Cloud Platform, and we have data center pre uh, breaches. That typically occurs really rarely, right? And it's the um, responsibility of the SaaS vendor, either AWS or Atlassian. But we also do have data breaches third-party errors, deletion, data imports. Think about uh, CSV imports um, or um, transfer data from one tool to another. So that is more occasionally or sometimes even frequently. And that's on the customer ownership. So when you want to know more about this topic and this shared responsibility model, which is not only available, as I said, for Atlassian, but also for other cloud solution vendors, feel free to check out our webinar about um, Jira data management with, uh, with Revise. And uh, now more about the best backup practices uh, with Bartosz. Thank you very much. So, uh, okay. So I, I believe I will start sharing my screen. And basically, Jan, you, you did a great job explaining why Jira should be like, should be even protected because like, like usually there, there is like a common misconception in, in this area because uh, very often customers, they, they do think that, well, as long as data are stored in, in the cloud, 
such data is already protected, but basically it's not true <laughs> because such data is not protected, it's not protected uh, at all. And indeed, accordingly to a shared responsibility model, uh, to make long story short, uh, vendor, whether it's Atlassian, whether it's uh, Microsoft, whether it's GitHub, any other SaaS vendor, uh, the, the thing is as follows. Vendor will take responsibility only for service, only for maintaining the service, granting you, granting you the, the access to, to such account and so on and so on. But when it comes to data, it's like customers, uh, it's on customer side, it's, it's users uh, business. So indeed, sometimes such vendor even recommends to, to use an external tool uh, to perform uh, like regular uh, backups on daily basis, on hourly basis, as often as possible to be able to uh, restore data whenever it's needed. That is why Git Protect, uh, like here internally uh, at Zopro Software, we decided to, to release uh, Git Protect as a backup tool for, uh, well, basically for DevOps. Uh, we we like to to call ourselves uh, one and only professional backup tool backup vendor for uh, for for uh, DevOps uh, industry that is able to cover all of like most popular uh, DevOps tools, including Jira, including uh, Bitbucket, including GitHub, including uh, GitLab as well. Uh, so what's like what's included to such protection you may uh, you may ask. Uh, and basically uh, git protect uh, is able to protect your entire Jira instance with everything that's uh, that's inside including projects including issues, uh, roles, workflows and so on. Uh, and so on, and the same applies to different to different services like uh, Bitbucket, GitHub, and GitLab. Besides repositories itself, uh, Git Protect also protects all metadata that is uh, associated with such with such data with such with such repositories. And sometimes it may happen that metadata is even more important than than the data uh, that the data uh, itself. That is why this is so important to also to be able to. Uh, protect the, the, the data. Today, I'm not going to, to talk, uh, to, talk uh, to, to you about Bitbucket protection, GitHub protection, GitLab protection. Today, we are going to focus uh, purely and exclusively on Jira uh, protection. Uh, and to be more specific, we are going, we are going to discuss uh, Jira backup best practices that can be implemented uh, with, with Git protect. And what's more important, I'm going to show you, like, in action, how to implement uh, such best practices to be sure that if anything unexpected happens uh, with your Jira instance, you will be able to um, to remain productive, to remain um, to uh, to retrieve the access to your uh, to your instance, uh, no matter what what happened to such uh, to such instance, because. As, as you uh, as you as you said, uh, there might be some like accidental deletion, intentional deletion. Uh, Atlassian may have some uh, some some outage. It happens from time to time, not that often, but still from time to time. So it's good to to know the answer to the question: What do I do if something happens? And such answer is uh, is included to to next slides that explain. Um, best practices in our opinion best practices what should be like included to good reliable uh, backup environment and i decided to divide um, the answer to, to 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 this question into like few um, let's say segments that are related to for example uh, backup performance uh, we know that there are some different backup tools on the market uh, similar to git protect but basically, those backup tools are not providing you such flexibility uh, in terms of, for example, uh, backup schedulers. Because we decided that uh, basically Atlassian administrators, they do know best uh, how often, for example, how often uh, such backups should be executed. And uh, like leaving the administrator without possibility to impact 
the backup scheduler is not a good option. We need to have uh, an option to to modify the backup frequency to decide how often backup is going uh, is going to be um, to be done. What's more important, it's to be able to like send the copies of of your Jira instance to different locations, right? Because let's imagine the situation that uh, you are using, for example, uh, some main storage and such storage becomes unavailable. What do you do? You do nothing because you simply do not have any like any other copy located somewhere else. That is why we decided to allow our users to like to bring multiple storages to set up multiple backup plans backup tasks, backup jobs, whatever we will call it, and uh, simply perform backup to multiple locations. Even if one storage will become unavailable, our customers uh, are able to get an access to the data from different uh, from different location from its additional from additional uh, storage. Also, we leave the the final decision in terms of retention to the customers. Uh, theoretically and practically, Git Protect allows you to set up any retention. It's up to you how long Git Protect will keep your data, will store your data, uh, or if you have any specific requirements, for instance, uh, that that says that uh, data should be stored for X, Y, Z. Uh, month or years. That's also possible to. Uh, it's also possible to uh, to set up. So backup performance. This is uh, this is like first part of the answer uh, in in terms of uh, best practices. Disaster recovery. This is like really important uh, important topic because uh, if something happens, something bad happens to your Jira instance, uh, to your Jira instance, you need to be prepared to to relocate your Jira instance to some different location, to some different region, for example, to, to some to some different uh, Atlassian region, uh, or simply to migrate uh, data between the uh, the accounts. That is why Git Protect also allows you to make the, for example, the cross restore between uh, uh, Jira uh, instances. Uh, in terms of uh, disaster recovery, this is I believe this is the perfect solution uh, that allows you to. Uh, protect one main organization, one main uh, instance. However, when it comes to restore, you can like simply uh, migrate data to different location, to different uh, instance. If the main one becomes unavailable due to, for example, uh, Atlassian outage. Again, it doesn't happen that often, but still from time uh, from time to time. Uh, Maybe to to add to 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 that. Yeah. Um, I worked in IT also, and it was really interesting to see it or to come to, to companies and ask the question, how many times a day do you back up the Jira instance, right? And most of the time it was like uh, around 12 hours. And um, to imagine that 12 hours of data is gone, that's quite a lot of money. Yeah, it's quite like... a lot of productivity. The, the, the bigger you get as a company, um, the more it really hurts you, right? So, yeah, like being able to get back to business and to maintain so called uh, business continuity uh, as fast as possible, as long as possible, uh, is crucial. Like, uh, it's like trivia. Uh, this is trivia, uh, what I will say, but basically, time is money and time is precious. So, uh, the the faster you you can like get back to your regular uh, business operations that's that's better because like every hour counts and uh, and yeah that is why also we we allow our users to uh, to download to download Jira instance to your local device uh, for example if your disaster recovery uh, scenario includes includes uh, ability to set up uh, a Jira on-premise uh, instance, uh, just in case. Just in case, uh, we uh, we allow our users to simply download such copy, download such backup, and push it as a uh, let's say manual import to uh, to Jira instance. So even even this is like super worst case scenario, but even if like entire Atlassian would uh, would face some outage. Or the customer will 
uh, will not have uh, an access to uh, to the internet uh, network still if the the access to the data is granted to, to the copies to the to the backups is is granted still such copy can be downloaded to the to the local device and it can be pushed as uh, du du thanks to uh, manual import uh, to on-premise jira uh, installation so even like we, we we like to we like to repeat that uh, there are many possible scenarios uh, and Git Protect covers like 99% of, of them. So like from our perspective, no matter what happens, we are prepared and we do have some solutions uh, to, to mitigate the, the issue of being uh, unavailable to, to, to continue the, the work. When it comes to security, like security first, right? Uh, and uh, Git Protect, guys, you, you need to remember that Git Protect is a backup tool. It's a professional backup solution. It's a backup platform. It's not a synchronization platform. We are not copying and we are not pasting the data from one place to, to another. We are protecting data on every single step. Starting from the, from the very beginning, through the backup process, and we also protect data uh, that are already stored uh, on, the, on the storage. Uh, you guys can encrypt uh, all backups uh, using your own encryption key. Uh, entire system is uh, is composed in so-called zero knowledge encryption technology. Um, that means that uh, so-called backup agent, which is like an application or device that is responsible for backup process, such application, such device doesn't have uh, such encryption key all the time. It receives it uh, only during the backup or during the restore process. And once such process is done, such encryption key is removed uh, from the uh, from the from this specific uh, device. So, from the very beginning, through the backup and restore process as well, uh, we protect data as well as we protect data uh, that is stored on the uh, on the storage. When it comes to getting access to the application, uh, we also sorted that out by allowing our users to uh, use their own IDPS. Uh, services like uh, Azure a a AD, uh, Okta, CyberArk, anything that can be integrated uh, through SAML uh, with Git Protect can be integrated over SAML uh, with Git Protect. So you can even manage the access to, do, to, to our service thanks to your IDPS, um, IDPS service. Uh, it might seem to be like obvious thing uh, that good reliable uh, backup tool should notify you that backup is done what is the result of the backup uh, if there is uh, something like if there the, if, if there's something happened during the backup perhaps uh, some uh, notifications uh, occurred or some errors occurred you also should be notified it uh, about that uh, right away and that is why we also uh, are notifying uh, notifying our users uh, uh, about the results of the backup by sending them the email uh, messages. Also, uh, the notification can be sent through Slack channel uh, or any webhook uh, notification can also be set up. So for example, if you use solution like Datadog or similar, or basically you would like to receive um, all the notifications uh, uh, to your main monitoring uh, system, you can also integrate it with Git Protect over the over the web. Uh, so there is like a, a lot of flexibility uh, also in, in the area of being notified uh, what was the what what was happening inside the system. And ransomware protection. This is uh, again this is quite obvious thing. Uh, accordingly to 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 latest researches, uh, ransomware attacks uh, are happening every. 11 seconds, 14 seconds, something like that. <laughs> Very often so somewhere in the world, someone is getting uh, hit by, by ransomware. Uh, and we do have also solution to that. So uh, as I said before, uh, you guys can be sure that if Git Protect will start protecting your data, and if uh, such ransomware will attack your storage, that may happen, of course, uh, your backups will be well protected, and even ransomware won't be able to like to, to impact the data uh, that are already um, in the uh, in the storage. Uh, 
how it's uh, how it's done. Uh, you can you can easily set up so-called immutable storage. Uh, that that means that some specific parts of data will be uh, written only once, uh, and after that, such data, selected data, cannot be overwritten uh, another time. So even if ransomware will get an access to uh, to your storage, it will do literally nothing. Uh, what's more important, if one of your, for example, one of your employees, uh, developers, uh, will include some executable file, for example, ransomware, uh, to some metadata, to some attachment uh, in dry run, obviously Git Protect will grab it and will send it to the storage. However, due to compression, due to encryption and some other uh, cryptographic mechanism that are uh, happening in the background, uh, all data that we send to the storage are kept in unexecutable form. So even if one of your employee will include some executable for, uh, file to the metadata, such file won't be executed uh, on the storage site. So as I said, we protect data on every single step, including um, the data that uh, that is already um, uh, that is already in the uh, on the storage. So uh, this is like the, the very very short uh, summary of uh, Jira backup and restore best practices. Uh, right now, I'm going to to jump to live demo, and I will try. We will we will find out if I manage to do so. But I will try to to fulfill all of those uh, best practices during live demo. Obviously, if you guys have any any questions, feel free to feel free to to ask. Uh, then we will decide. Uh, if we are going to answer those questions right away, just to keep the context of the question, or we are going to leave the, the answer to, to such questions uh, to the Q&A session that will be uh, organized at the very, very end of, uh, of today's meeting. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to ask. If not, I'm going to, uh, to jump to, uh, to live demo, and I will go through all of those uh, best practices in action. Sounds great. So basically, entire journey starts here on gitprotect.io. Uh, I will show you how to start using the how to start using the service. There we go. Uh, because, like, something happened with my. Because the first best practice is to implement uh, a plug and play solution. So, like uh, we we are aware that usually the customers they don't want to you know to sacrifice uh, too much time to 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 create to set up to configure uh, the solution. It should be provided straight away and it should be straightforward as uh, as much as possible. That is why no code implementation. What does it mean? It means that you can start using the service right away. How are we going to do that? Uh, it's quite easy. You just need to visit gitprotect.io. Uh, and here is the sign up for free button. Uh, once we click it, obviously, I need to uh, obviously I need to create an account. It will take literally a couple of seconds. There we go. And literally in a couple of seconds, I will be able to start protecting my Jira uh, instance. So like literally to start using the service, you just need like five minutes. And after those five minutes, uh, your Jira will be protected and you will have like peace of mind. Uh, and uh, you will be sure that uh, all data that are already in your Jira will be uh, also well protected uh, with Git Protect. So, as I said, a couple of seconds and uh, and the application is already running. As you can see, everything is hosted uh, in our cloud uh, environment. So, literally, you don't have to deploy, you don't have to install anything, literally anything on your site, everything is hosted and hosted, uh, hosted by us. And basically we take entire responsibility for 
like maintaining your uh, your service. Uh, the main topic of today's meeting is uh, protecting Gyra. That is why we are going to connect my Gyra instance with uh, with Git Protect. And how are we gonna do that? I will zoom out a little bit. How are we gonna do that? It's quite easy. Uh, we just need to provide some crucial uh, credentials. Uh, so let me grab my password manager and let me copy the instance URL. Uh, which is git protect backup .net. Then we need to paste the username, which is basically my email address. And then, and basically it will be the last step of you know creating a connection between git protect and and uh, instance. We need to provide a token to prove that we are entitled to uh, to add. Jira instance to, to Git Protect. How are we gonna do that? It's quite easy. We just need to uh, generate personal access token, and and this is exactly what I'm going to uh, to do right now. I. Ophelian account is in Polish, but basically I'm quite sure that you guys are familiar with the with the interface. Okay, let's revoke, revoke this one. And now we can create, um, let's call it, let's call it like that. And let's copy it. So, Let's add such token and all credentials, all, all secrets, all tokens are kept in built-in password uh, manager. That is like part of uh, our solution. Uh, so all data that, uh, that is essential to, to use the service is kept, uh, is kept here. And as you can see here, I provided the URL uh, to my instance. I provided my username as well as my personal access token. And basically, that's it. My backup will start in uh, in seven hours. Entire system works in uh, automated way. So you don't have to remember that, OK, to, tomorrow morning I need to create a backup. No, it will, uh, it will be executed uh, automatically. Obviously, you can modify the backup plan. You can modify the backup scheduler to uh, to create it, uh, like to execute it as often as um, as you need. Obviously, we are not going to wait seven hours to to trigger that backup. We are going to trigger it uh, manually as planned. And as you can see here, the backup is the backup is running. So I will leave the process uh, running in the background. So this best practice is already done, right? We have just like implemented the, the backup tool right away. I visited gitprotect.io. I created a regular account. It was set up in, in seconds. Then I created, I added my Jira instance and, I, and the backup plan uh, has been added automatically. It will, it will be done on daily basis. Nevertheless, I'm able to modify it to, to make it more frequent. And all backups uh, will be done accordingly to some scam, to some, let's say, scenario. First backup is always full one. Then we perform uh, incremental and differential uh, backups. Let's take a closer look at, oh, OK, it already finished. As you can see here, uh, my, backup, my backup is done. I can even take a closer look at what had been included to such backup. And I can see that uh, there was six projects uh, and just one issue. I'm using some dummy accounts on so the content of my Jira doesn't really matter. Nevertheless, if I'm like super curious what have been included specifically uh, data by data, I'm all also able to verify uh, what exactly have been included to such uh, to such copy. So the backup is done, right? The backup is done, and obviously. I did receive the email notification. I have my Gmail uh, inbox uh, opened in separate tab. So let's let's focus a little bit uh, on on being alerted about uh, about the backups. So how are we gonna set up 
um, the notifications. It's quite simple. If you go to settings, and as you can see, all email notifications are enabled by de by default. Nevertheless, as I said, you can also set up Slack notification uh, to receive all notifications uh, to to Slack channel, as well as you can. Uh, generate some webhooks, so all the notifications will be will be pushed, will be sent to to your indicated, to your selected, um, to your selected um, system over the webhooks. And uh, additional admin accounts. What does it mean? Usually, uh, like usually, uh, Git Protect is managed not only by one person. Usually, Git Protect is managed by more than one uh administrators uh, so we decided to allow our users to split the responsibility for managing the system uh, between the team members uh, so i'm able to like set up an um, additional admin account uh, by doing that manually i can simply like provide the username which always is uh, an email address then i'm able to provide password also, and basically what's, what's more important is that I can set up such additional admin account with specific role and permission level. So I'm able not only to create such accounts, but I'm able also to, to decide uh, what exactly what such account is able to, what, what such user is able to do inside the system. It can be viewer, for example. In that case, such, um, such user is only able to log into the system and that's it. Like to verify what was happening, uh, verify the logs, verify the, the task results, and that's it. It's not able to modify anything. Uh, then I can set up some additional admin account with uh, with backup operator uh, permission. That means that such user is able to execute the backup. For example, manually is able to create a backup uh, backup scheduler, backup uh, backup task, but it's not able to restore the data. To be able to restore the data, such user needs to be at least uh, should be restore operator, as the name suggests. Uh, such user is able to restore uh, restore data. The highest level of um, of, um, of like the, the highest level of permission is obviously system administrator, and basically system administrator uh, is able to do everything uh, inside the system. What's more important? What's more important? The most let's say critical permission needs to be granted in separate step because like. As I said, this is quite critical uh, permission, for example, to be able to delete data from the storage. I can easily create uh, any of those uh, users with specific permission with or without ability to uh, delete data. So root administrator, like main uh, user, has like full impact on who is able to do what inside the system. Uh, so that was additional admin accounts. Uh, multiple storages. As I said, what happens if some storage is unavailable? Uh, well, it's good to have the same copy, the same like backup, uh, however, in separate location. And how are we gonna do that? Uh, we can go simply to storages. As you can see here, there is some storage already uh, added, and this is the storage that we provide uh, by default. Nevertheless, I'm able to bring my own storage, uh, external storage like AWS S3, uh, Azure Blob, uh, Wasabi, GC, uh, Google Cloud Storage, Backblaze, or basically any other uh, S3 compliant storage. So I can also perform backups uh, to those, let's call it external uh, location. Also, Git Protect allows you to keep the data uh, locally. So let's call it on-premise storage. So even if you guys uh, won't have an access to the internet network, but you will have uh, some backup stored locally, still you will be able to restore the data even without uh, internet connection because the data will be located, let's say, under the desk, uh, somewhere within your organization. I'm not going to add, uh, add additional storage, just to just to move forward, but basically there is uh, such possibility. 
uh, monitoring uh, and SLA, it will it will appear in a second on main dashboard. Disaster recovery and cross uh, cross recovery. I'm going to show it uh, right away. Granular restore. This is something I will uh, focus on in a second. And anti ransomware uh, protection. This is also uh, it has also been discussed. So let's focus on uh, disaster recovery and cross restore. We have our backup, right? We have our backup because. As we can see here, the backup is completed. It finished successfully. Uh, there has been some data sent to, to the storage. So let's imagine the situation that my main account is not available. I lost the access to it, and but still I need to 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 be able to uh, to get an access to my own data. How are we gonna do that? Let's jump back to DevOps. And as you can see, see here, my account, my Jira instance is still there. But basically, I don't have an access to it. My like the instance is gone. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my additional uh, my additional Jira instance so I can migrate the data between the instances. And this is basically this is uh, like true. Uh, let's call it disaster recovery. I plan to be able to restore the data between um, between the, uh, the instances, and basically the the process, the the steps I need to take are exactly the same. I need to provide a new URL of my just in case Jira instance. Then I need to put the the username, and again I need to uh, provide token. I have already generated a token. Uh, within my uh, Athlesian account, so I'm going to use exactly the same one, and let's proceed. Let me refresh uh, my uh, my interface, and as you can see here, uh, my additional uh, Jira instance is already here. So what I have done is I added my main organization, which is called Git Protect Backup, uh, and such uh, organization is already protected. But when it comes to restore, I'm going to restore to different organization, to different location. Uh, so how are we gonna do that? Let's go to restore option. Also, I have the possibility to select uh, what version I'm going to, to restore. Uh, obviously, such backup has been done only once during today's meeting. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, if such backup would be like uh, would be executing over and over again, here I would have uh, like entire list of available uh, versions. Nevertheless, I'm going to restore well the only version I, I do have, and uh, I can simply select what will be the final destination of the restore process. So let's go with uh, with cloud to cloud restore. And this time, let's restore to Git Protect webinar instance, which is my just-in-case instance. And, and that's it. Uh, Bartosz, I've got a question. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can see it as well in the question tab. Um, yeah. It's as um, if you could delete that one issue that was uh, backed up in Jira and show how to restore it from Git Protect. Uh, can you please delete the, the one issue that was backed up in Jira and show us how to restore it from from Git Protect? Okay, this is a very good question. So let me uh, let me let me let me do that. If I click the the name of uh, of this instance, I will be forwarded to my uh, to this specific Jira instance. And uh, yeah, let's like as I said, I'm using a dummy account, so I can easily uh, delete this specific this specific uh, project. However, the restore task is already is already running, so I will leave it running. But if I jump back to, to my DevOps and I will open this particular instance, this is my let's call it restore instance. As you can see here, the import process started automatically, and basically right now everything is on Atlassian side, 
And right now, Atlayton is responsible for you know, collecting all the data together to, to provide me the, 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 final, um, the final shape of my original Jira instance. Uh, right now, uh, Divya, you, you ask a like, really good question. And uh, I can answer this question in like two different uh, in two different ways. Today, like today, Git Protect is able to protect entire Jira instance, and when it comes to restore process, we also restore entire Jira instance without going deep uh, to the content of it. So today, you are not able to like restore only some selected. Uh, some selected project or issue or attachment or workflow, whatever. Uh, but uh, quite soon, I believe in two, three or four weeks, let's say uh, around uh, first half of June, so quite soon, uh, we are going to release a new version of Git Protect that will allow you to make the restore process way more granular. So still, we will be protecting entire Jira instance, but when it comes to restore process, you will be able to select uh, some selected, you, you will be able to restore some selected uh, project issues uh, and so on. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I expected that, uh, that question. That is why I prepared uh, a such a version of application that is not available yet, obviously, but obviously I do have uh, an access to it. So let me drag and drop uh a new version of application that uh, is running like here internally uh, and as you can see here uh, i added i already like before the, the to this meeting i added my uh, my jira instance to it i perform i executed uh, like some backups however when it comes to restore it's way more granular so it will be an answer to your question that you will be able to restore some selected issues, some select, selected uh, projects. How are we going to do that? Well, obviously, uh, I'm only going to show you like an example uh, what kind of uh, data we will be able to, to restore. Uh, and by data, I'm not referring to entire data. I'm referring to some specific uh, types of data. So let's make granular restore. And again, we need to decide where, like what will be the final destination of, of the restore process. Uh, let's make it to original uh, uh, organization. And then we will be able to decide whether we are going to restore products or for example, issues, attachments and workflows. If I select, for example, projects, I will be able, I'm not able right now, but I will be able to uh, like select some desired ones. Uh, so for example, these two projects will be uh, restored. However, this, this one in, in the middle will be simply excluded from the restore process. So as I said, to make long story short, quite soon in two, three or four weeks, well, until the, 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 the first half of, of June, uh, Git Protect will allow you to restore the data with on, on granular level. Uh, so you will be able to, uh, to decide whether products will be uh, restored, uh, issues, attachments, and workflows. So you won't be able, won't be obligated to restore entire Jira uh, as it is right now, because Today, as I said, uh, entire Jira instance is protected and entire Jira instance with all the content of it uh, is restored to the same Jira instance, to different Jira instance, like a cloud instance, or entire Jira instance can be downloaded to your local device and it can be imported to your, uh, for example, uh, on-premise installation. Uh, let's, let's figure out uh, how my restore process uh, ended. And as you can see here, this is Git Protect webinar. So this, this was my just in case uh, instance. And as you can see here, uh, all the projects are there. So basically the restore process uh, succeeded. And also here we have like clear confirmation that restore process is also successfully uh, finished. And also we can verify what exactly have been restored to different, to different uh, account. Amazing. That um, looks really good. So in between the um, 
um, in, in between the restore process or uh -huh. also when we work with the Jira instance, what um, Git Protect does in the back end is to produce differential backups, right? So we don't have to wait every like seven hours to do a backup, uh, but we have regular updates um, of the full backup so that we can jump back to a different time point in time and recover um, an issue with the, the details from that time, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, and basically I can show you show it uh, right now. I will execute the backup manually uh, mm -hmm. as planned. So the first, the previous copy that uh, Git Protect did was the full one. So we grabbed like 100% of data and sent it to mm -hmm. the storage. But right now, uh, um, Git Protect is performing uh, incremental backup. Uh, so it should finish a uh, little bit faster because like, I believe there, like, there is no uh, changes and on modifications. And as you can see here, uh, it already, it's already uh, done. Let's jump back here. And yeah, it's also succeeded. So I can be sure that this particular copy is also uh, finished with success. And to verify, how it looks uh, during the restore process. Let me jump back here. And here we have like two separate versions of the same instance of the same uh, of the same uh, backup copy. This one is incremental. Hopefully it's visible to you guys. This one mm -hmm. is incremental. Uh, however, if I would desire to restore the full one, I'm able to, to restore the, the full one. From user perspective, it doesn't really matter which version which version is about to be restored, whether it's full, whether it's incremental, whether it's differential, the steps are exactly the same. The process is also exactly the same. So from the user's experience perspective, it doesn't really matter. Amazing. That's also a really good use case for uh, the Atlassian Enterprise Cloud, right? So like one um, data center is currently not working. There's a, a problem maybe um, you can set up uh, a new instance in a new area in a new region and you can just um, back up and restore or restore uh, your whole site to a new um, instance and you can work there. That's amazing. This is, this is exactly what I did. I protected this specific instance. Let's assume that my main organization, my main environment uh, is not available. So I can create an alternative account in different region. Let's assume this is this one and uh, we can easily like uh, recover all the data to this specific uh, to this specific uh, account. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, I also deleted one one project. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys remember that I deleted one specific project. And after the synchronization, by the way, synchronization is also happening uh, in automated way. Nevertheless, I'm able to uh, like synchronize uh, data automatically. Git protect detects that one product is missing and it's also uh, displayed, uh, displayed here. Uh, so uh, if new backup would be executed, it would contain As I said, uh, Git protect lets you to, to migrate your data between the regions, between the accounts. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to show it, uh, show it to you uh, because it's too obvious. Uh, what I mean is that Git, Git Protect also lets you to restore the data to the same organization. Uh, however, uh, something is happening with my internet connection, I believe. Uh, yeah, in that case, bit. all data would be overwritten. So I'm not going to do that right now, okay. but uh, basically, I did show you how to set up a, uh, a backup environment, how to create a backup, how to execute the backup, and how to restore uh, restore the data. So if you guys have any, any questions, feel free to, to ask. Uh, 